Hey, what's going on, y'all? My name is Tawan Cole. I already know why you're here, so I'm not here to waste none of your time. Let's go ahead and get straight to it. So this video is for the people who already have car rental businesses and they want to scale that. So whether you're at 3K a month, whether you're at 5K a month, even if you're doing 25 or 50 and you want to scale past that, this is the video for you. Okay, so we're just talking about high level of a car rental business. There are four main pillars that we usually operate within. Okay, so the first one is acquisition. The second one is going to be insurance. The third one is going to be marketing. And the last one here is going to be operations and systems. So just to give you kind of an overview of all these things, number one is acquisition. So how are you acquiring your vehicles? Are these vehicles personally acquired by you? Are you getting through cash? Are you doing financing? Are you doing brokering? Are you doing JVs? Is it an investor? Whatever it may be, it falls under to acquisition. Okay? The second piece is going to be insurance. So firstly, are you leaving it in your personal name and now acquiring renters to have their own full coverage to cover them on the rentals? Or are you going to go ahead and pay that commercial insurance to get them on that car? So that would be under insurance. The third piece will be marketing. So what channels are you using to get customers for your cars? Okay, are you doing Instagram? Are you doing SEO? Are you doing uh, referrals? Are you having a Google business page? Whatever it may be, will fall under marketing. Uh, the fourth piece here will be operations and systems. So what systems and operations do you have within your business? Do you have any softwares? Okay, when it comes to um, you know, your systems, do you have anybody that you may hired? you know, to take care of fleet management, to do your car washes, to, you know, body repair, um, to, you know, customer success management too as well. So all those will fall under operations and systems. You have a business currently, each and every one of these things you haven't went through. Um, I hope y'all can see that, let me move over. Um, so that hopefully that's a little bit better angle for y'all. So you already, you know, have acquisition, you're already doing insurance, you're already doing marketing, you already, you know, added some operations and systems, maybe. So now we're talking about scaling. So let's just say currently, um, I'm gonna try to list a couple things down where like you can acquire cars. Let's just say, you know, you buy some vehicles cash, you can finance some vehicles. Uh, let's say you got some brokerage deals you're doing. And let's say you know about some JVs. Okay, so that's mainly on the base level, that's what people are doing currently. Okay, so you're buying cars cash, you're getting some couple cars under your person or your business name. Um, you're doing some broker deals or you're doing some JVs, okay? And if you're not doing broker or JV deals, this is where you can start seeing some increase when it comes to scaling your business too as well by just applying those two things. Um, one thing that you guys may be doing or you're not um, will be adding, you know, some investors, getting some investors in your business. Um, and I'll show you guys how to target those investors too um, a little bit later on. So investors, these are people who make millions of dollars. They don't have to be millions of dollars, millions of dollars but they're looking for write-offs. Okay, so you know each and every vehicle that's over six thousand dollars, six thousand. I said six thousand dollars. Listen, I'm happy talking about money. Um, six thousand pounds. Um, those vehicles can be written off on their taxes. So why not, from from an investor standpoint, I can buy a vehicle. It's going to help me write off on my taxes, and it's going to produce reoccurring revenue each and every month. Why not? They just need to know that you exist. So you can uh, get in contact with these investors. The easy way I like to find them, and this is just me. I'm being honest. Go to your local uh, country clubs, um, you know, your Lifetime Fitness. Here in, the, um, in Atlanta, we have this huge Lifetime Fitness in Buckhead. I mean, it costs about 350 not 350 but it's about 200, $200 to $300 a month. You go on there, network with some people, you're going to find some investors. Obviously, you need to have your stuff in order, right? So make sure that you have a business plan. If you already got a car on a business, you already been doing it. So they will see some of your records and see that, hey, this thing is actually working and be willing to work with you too as well. If that doesn't work, let's say if you don't want to go talk to people, I can show you more a little bit more about how you can call out that specific audience member that you're looking to track when it comes to Instagram ads and we'll be able to find you some investors. Um, but essentially, these are all the ways that you can, you know, get a person with inside of, not get a person, but get a vehicle for your fleet. Okay, and if you got, like I said, if you don't have these three, those are extremely important when it comes to scaling your business. When it comes to insurance, that should not be a problem for you, especially if you've already been in the game. Like I said, you either got the commercial insurance or you're keeping the vehicles in the personal name and then just making sure that renter has that full coverage that can cover 
your vehicle in case of an accident happens. So insurance should not be a problem for you. Uh, but then we have marketing, and I'm gonna move marketing down here, actually. So marketing, um, and I'll just erase it. Um, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. I'll just erase that from here. So marketing, I'm gonna list down all the ways that I currently you know, market my cars, all the ways that I have done marketing my cars, and uh, we can just dive into each and every one, that's cool for y'all too as well. So uh, let, me, let me get a little low real quick. <laughs> so the first one is a Google business page. Uh, the second one is going to be Yelp. The third one is just going to be Instagram. The fourth one is going to be referrals. And the fifth one is going to be Facebook Marketplace. Um, platforms. Um, and I was, when I say platforms, I'm talking about Turo and Hire Car. Make sure you guys can see that. Okay, so these are the six, and these, like I said, this is just for me, and this is what has been working for me. Okay, so these are the different six channels that I can market my cars where they're consistently booked. I'm talking about 30 days out of 30. So the first one, obviously Google business page, making sure that you have, when somebody types in Google car rentals, you want your name to pop up within your city. So you can go a lot deeper with this when it comes to SEO, right? Search engine optimization, but I don't do SEO. So I'm not here to give you some advice that I don't actually do, but I think it's great for you just to go ahead and just post and have a Google business page, just so you're still gonna be able to get some clicks from that. Um, and that's simple and easy to do. Now uh, the second piece will be Yelp. So just create your Yelp and uh, having your business on there with the address and all those things is extremely important. Um, the third piece will be Instagram, which, which I'll probably say probably 50% of my traffic comes from is Instagram. And on, on your Instagram account, set it up just like you would a Google business page, have your professional photo, the name of your business, you know, the hours that you operate, you can actually have your website linked within your, your um, bio too as well. And then just make sure you have some entertaining content in there. Um, don't just have the pictures of your cars and a plain video of the car, right? Spice it up a little bit. We live in a, you know, a different age now. People have very low, um, people, people have very low, um, what's the word for it? Um, attention spans, all right? So just make sure that you're doing some little different viral clips in there. If you guys need help on what viral clips to create, um, I got a whole list that's going viral too as well that I'll be able to show you guys to implement for your car rental business. Um, the fourth one will be referrals. This is, this is, was one of my favorite ones. Literally, when I first started, y'all, when I first started, I didn't run any ads at all. It was just strictly referrals. And I was doing great customer service, um, which I'll talk to a lot more about when it comes to operations and systems. But referrals are so powerful. And especially for me, because I like to run sedans, me personally, um, it's just an easier passive income, quote unquote, uh, business model for me. So when I have a good customer and they refer me to another good customer, and mind you, these sedans are staying gone for six to eight, sometimes 12 months at a time. So if I can find a good person with a good referral, it just keeps stacking up, man. And it allows that, you know, the customer uh, experience for me just to be very, you know, less hands off and then also as well, not harsh and not too bad on me too as well when it comes to these daily renters sometimes, cause I already know how y'all, I already, listen, y'all know how I be. Okay, so referrals, this is um, super powerful and this, you can just introduce this to your customers when they drop up a car, you can be like, hey, I have a referral program, any person that you bring me, I will give you 50 to $100 per person. Um, which is, like I said, man, this is super powerful. Uh, the, fifth, the fifth piece will be Facebook Marketplace. Um, I know you guys may have heard this, if you have not, um, all you are doing are listing the vehicle as an item on Facebook Marketplace. You're gonna have about four pictures of the vehicle. The first one should be a video and it's just gonna be you walking around a car, talking about the details of the car, the cost, and uh, who you're looking for when it just comes out to calling you out your avatar. Um, with inside the price point, you're gonna list the daily price of the vehicle. Inside the description, you wanna have all the requirements the renter needs to have, also the price, uh, the deposit, and then also who I love to leave my phone number, your business phone number, of course. You can leave your email in there too as well, so it can be just another you know, direct traffic source for you. Um, the last one here, platforms. So leave, put a vehicle on these platforms, right? At least one. Um, this can be, you know, one vehicle if you're running, you know, strictly sedans or if you're running strictly exotics, 
have one exotic on Turo because the people who's going to be renting out that you know Lambo on Turo will be the same person that you can market to privately and get all of your money instead of having to pay in those fees. You got me? So out of these six channels, trust me, you don't got to do every single one of them. You can, you can say, you know what, I'm going strictly Google business page. I'm going all the way in. Okay. Or you can say, I'm going Instagram. I'm going all the way in. You know, so just don't feel overwhelmed. I know it's different type of traffic um, you know, channels for you. So just make sure you pick one and just go all the way in it. You're going to get customers regardless. Okay. Uh, but when it comes to every, all these two as well, make sure that you have a good qualification process. Um, I'll talk to that a lot more when it comes to, you know, my coaching program and all those things too as well. Make sure you have people qualified. Raise your risk management systems. Make sure those are operating clean. You don't want nobody getting your car who is a bad renter. Okay. So that's very important. So that's marketing. Um, I want to make sure everybody's clear here. We, we still moving and operating. We talked about acquisition. So all the ways that you essentially can get a car, contacting those investors, make sure that you're doing some brokering and some JVs, um, especially with the people within your area. Uh, right. So don't feel like don't get no ego. Be like, man, I'm the I'm the only car rental business in my city. Bro. Other people who are doing it as well. But if you're constantly getting your vehicles being booked out by applying this great marketing system, it's great for you too as well to be able to, you know, create a broker deal with a, you know, a fellow person or a fellow business that's, you know, 30 minutes down the block from you. So you can consistently, you know, increase your earnings at the end of the day. That's all it's about, man. It's, it's growing together. You know what I mean? Making money, bro. That's, that's, that's the most powerful thing here. So yeah, we got acquisition. Like I said, insurance shouldn't be no problem for you guys. And then thirdly here, we have marketing. So now we're about to dive into the operations and systems. Okay, so the, the most beautiful part of this whole thing, uh, let's go ahead and dive into it. So the first thing, and this is what I like to do with my students um, when it comes to operations. I like to go strictly from point A, okay? So I like to streamline processes before I move anywhere, okay? When it comes to hiring or, you know, getting a software or any of those things. So if you guys are interested in that, uh, what it will usually look like is I will sit, I'm going to sit you down. It should be about for about like an hour, hour and a half. And I want to see exactly what's going on within your business from point A to point Z. So that is when a customer contacts you about a car all the way to them returning the vehicle. OK, we're going to map down each and every second, like each and every step that's happening throughout this transaction and this transition of this person bringing back your car. Why do you do this? Because now you're going to be able to see everything that you're doing that's not helping that needle move forward. OK, if you're doing something within that whole process that's, you know, messing the customer up or, you know what I mean? You're doing some extra that's not helping this go as smooth as possible. You are losing people and you are slowing your business down. OK, so number one, off work, we need to streamline processes. So once I do that and I can see everything is running smoothly, now we can go ahead and start talking about hiring and getting softwares within your business. OK, so let's dive into softwares. And these are fleet management systems. OK, so the uh, top three right now. And when I say top three, when I say top three, everybody is different. Right. So we're going to have different likes. We're going to have a different dislikes. So I want you all to go check out all these softwares, see which ones that you like and go with the one that you like. They're all around the same price. OK, so the first one is going to be which one of my favorites is um, HQ rentals. Man, this marker is kind of going out a little bit. Sorry. Right. Um, the second one is going to be rent centric. Uh, the third one is going to be fleet. Uh, IO. And of course, of course, there are going to be different ones out there. I know I've heard of like fleet finesse and um, some other ones too as well. So you can do your own research. These are just three that I know are reput reputable. Um, they're usually at the, uh, the uh, car rental. Um, conference, the huge big car rental company conference that happens every single year. They're, those are the companies that's usually there. So I know these are reputable companies that you can trust and use as fleet management systems. So what these systems are going to allow you to do now, you're going to have a whole nother level look at your car rental business. OK, because I know before y'all probably were just out here running and gunning it. Y'all got a little uh, Google spreadsheet or something. Y'all trying to check the daily amount you to make from the car, how long it's been out, how long this person got to they return it back. We go ditch all that. OK. Now you can do all that within this software. It's going to do everything for you. You just plug the car in. You're going to plug the person in and it's just go operate by itself. What this is going to allow you to do, you're going to be very have so much clarity within your business. So now you can start making majority of just decisions by numbers instead of having an emotional business. OK, when you have an emotional business, when you feel like that, that, uh, you know, that that you're the new Ferrari that you just got, why it's not moving. 
or you know you feel like man it ain't been out this much this month you actually go back and look at your numbers and you can see man it actually did good this month right so we have to remove ourselves from this emotional type of thinking and move into strictly numbers based okay so with that yeah so the software that's going to help you do that when it comes to maintenance everything it's just going to clear everything up for you so it's going to gain some of your time back too as well so once we have a good system um, you can start hiring people. Now, this is only if you want to, if you want to be macho man and do your own thing, you can do that. But I feel like this helps you as well so you can remove yourself from doing some of the tasks that you know you're not supposed to be doing, right? So we call this delegation. So, um, yeah, I'll just put this right here. Yeah, I'll put this right here. Hiring. Hiring. <clears throat> so for me personally, uh, when it comes to delegation, I like to remove communication delegation, uh, even if that's a word. Uh, so I like to delegate all communication. So when it comes to a person inquiring about a car, when it comes to even if I have to talk to them on a the phone, um, sending them out contracts, um, accepting payments, all those things, I like to just delegate them. OK, so now I can free up some of my time to do other things that can you know, optimize this business. So hiring. Um, first one I would suggest is hiring a VA and you can get a VA from onlinejobs.ph. Okay, this software is going to cost you about $50 a month, but if you find a good VA that you like, um, you can go ahead and just cancel your membership on there and just stick with the VA that you have. So, I'm kind of just, I'm kind of all over the place, but I want to make sure just I get everything here so y'all are completely understood. Okay, so I know a lot of you guys have big aspirations and goals, okay, when it comes to you want to have your own location, you want to make six figures a month, whatever it may be. Okay, hiring a VA will be just the first step. Okay, once you learn how to hire this VA, you're going to train them and create SOPs for them to learn and to be as maximal as possible for that position. Obviously, if you're going to get a location, you're going to want somebody to be at the front desk. Okay, so essentially, all you're doing is taking all those same SOPs that you taught that VA and teaching the same thing to this front desk person. Because, me personally, when I think about team, this is a relationship. So, I don't want any contractors on my team. I want somebody that I can meet in person. I see them every single morning when I walk in the office. Hey, how was your day? How did everything work yesterday? So now I can have more of an on, like one-on-one -on -one approach to this. So if it's a problem that's happening, they can fully express it to me right then and there. And now I can go ahead and provide a solution for them so we can get things back on the road. Okay, when it comes to a contractor, you will have to get on a Zoom call with them. Um, time zones out there are different. Language barrier can be a little tough, tough. But this is just perfect for somebody who's just initially want to hire somebody to go ahead and remove themselves from the business. Okay, and I know I, we talked about um, a little bit, I said it there a little bit when it comes to like SOP, so standard operations. So the, when, when you're hiring somebody, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long road to get there, but you have to, when I was talking about streamlining your processes when it comes to check in and check out, that's, that's called an SOP. So now once you know exactly what you're doing from a person clicks on the vehicle to them dropping a the car off, that's a whole SOP. So you could take that same system and give it to somebody and train them on how to, you know, go throughout that process. You get me? So you'd be doing the same thing with the VA. Like I said, get you a VA, allow them to do everything with them, train them. Um, you got to train them hard. OK, you need to be like on their tails, probably for a whole month straight, meeting with them every single day. Allow them to, you know, get in touch with the type of language that you like to use, what you expect out of them. And then once you be able to see they're running or operating, if they're not doing good in the next three weeks, fire them, go find somebody else. OK, but hiring is a, is a deep, is a deep layer of things that we can dive into. But that's just that. Okay, other than other hires, okay, so you have somebody that can manage your fleet, who can check in your cars, who can check out your cars, who can actually go ahead and start using your softwares and implementing all that, you know, for, my bad, y'all, implement all those for you so you don't have to do none of that. Um, you can have a detailed person who comes and clean your vehicles every day. You can have a body shop guy that you need to have. You can have somebody who's doing towing that needs to go pick up vehicles so customers don't like to pay. You can have somebody who does, you know, your maintenance. I like to have a mobile mechanic. All those things come to hiring and you're going to be able just to consistently remove yourself from the business. And it's going to be able to operate by yourself. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's when you go actually move into, you know, the business on a roll. But yeah, man, I, uh, I don't want to go too, too crazy with y'all, honestly. I want to make sure that I didn't forget anything. So yeah, I know we were um, kind of all over the place. I said a lot, but I really want y'all to just get the just scaling is not that hard. It's going to be another different framework. I want to throw this on the back end of it 
and this will probably be the last thing, but I think this help, w would help you guys out a lot, honestly. Um, I'm gonna throw some things on the back end of this. So, when you are scaling and you are removing yourself from the business, you are so used to doing everything yourself and you got the reward for it, you know, built this business up by yourself, so you just feel entitled. I can't find nobody who is talented as me that know how to run it like me. Remove that mindset, okay? We're gonna have to kill this ego, okay? A great book I would suggest you guys reading is Ego is the Enemy. It's gonna help you out extremely well. Just because I get it, listen, this is our baby. Like, we love this business. We done got it to this point. We don't want nobody to mess it up. But that's why it's important just to create your SOPs, create training systems. Learning how to become a leader is going to transcend your business. And being okay knowing that there's somebody out there that can do the exact thing that you're doing better than you and faster than you. Okay? So, uh, but yeah, like I was saying, I hope this helped. I kind of want to just give you guys a little deep in dive of like what I do with my clients currently. Obviously, it goes deeper into you know each and every piece, but um, I, I love to you know help out and just share when I can. So that's the most important about this. So, but if you feel like any of this um, didn't go all the way through, if you feel like you know what I mean, I would love to know a lot more. Um, I'm going to leave a link in the description down below. You can book a personal one-on-one -on -one call with me, and I'll show you exactly how to scale your car rental business um, to get to wherever, honestly, wherever that you want to. Um, I really care about the people that I work with, so um, I'm going to take my time. It's going to be with me. I'm not going to dish you off to no coach. It's just going to be me and you this whole time on this journey. So if that's not like something that you're interested in, all you got to do is book, click the link down below. You're going to be able to book that personal one-on-one -on -one call with me. And uh, yeah, man, I'm super excited to see how I can help you on this journey, man, grow and scale your business. Um, but other than that, if you feel like you don't need my help, take it, take it. Um, I, wish, I wish somebody was able to do this for to me too as well when I wanted to you know, scale my business. So if any of this stuff helped, at least let me know in the comments down below. Um, I would love to see that, man. But other than that, I hope y'all have a great rest of y'all day. God bless y'all, man, and I'll see y'all for the next one. Go on. I'll see y'all on the call too, all right? <laughs>